Um, hi. I don't want to be awkward, but this video is going to be pretty epic. <laughs> oh my god! Bruh. Hey, how are ya? And welcome back to another YouTube video. My name's Jacob Andrew Sharp, and gang, we've got a doozy of a video for ya. Let's just say I did a thing. Today's video's kind of a derp moment. Yeah, there's nuggets in here. Epic pizza adulting nuggets. I can has pizza nuggets pulls? Lols. Sorry, gang, but that's what we're looking at today. Today's nuggets are cringe, but not just any cringe, millennial cringe. Today I wanted to do a deep dive on cringe millennials, but I don't wanna just sit here and tell you all about what millennials did and what millennials are currently doing. I'm not here to bait you with nostalgia. So I thought while I talk about millennials, I should also talk to millennials. So today I'm gonna to be interviewing some of my best pals, Danny Gonzalez and Curtis Connor. But before that happens, I just wanted to talk about who cringe millennials are. And yeah, I think I might know a thing or two because I was one. I couldn't have been more of a cringe millennial. And here's a little montage of photos to prove that I was a cringe millennial. I hope you hated that as much as I did. Now, I'm a 90s kid, so only 90s kids will remember this. Or, it doesn't matter, because you were born when you were born. Everyone, stop saying that. Guys, back when I was a kid, times were simpler, people were kinder, and the earth was healthier. Guys, every morning we would layer our deep v-necks, gracefully slip into our spray-on skinny jeans, and finally we would put on our shutter shades because our future was looking pretty bright. Life was kind of perfect and it seemed like it would never change. We all said what we wanted and we wore what we wanted. Oh, and the internet? <laughs> Back in my day, the internet was the wild west. <laughs> Twitter wasn't the flaming piece of diarrhea that it is now. It was more like a gas station toilet full of the most offensive jokes you've ever heard. We didn't know we were hurting anybody. No, I said those slurs because I feel no remorse. And that's why it's funny. It was a different time. I feel like millennials grew up in one of the weirdest points in human history. A lot of us grew up without home computers and phones. And then all of a sudden we had home computers and phones. And then that allowed the older generation to label us. Oh, give me a break with this me generation. You never want to work, and you're always on those dang computer phones. Oh, guys, I'm sorry we couldn't destroy the housing market while simultaneously destroying our own mental health. Sorry, next time we'll take all the jobs and we'll start destroying the environment. No, oh, yeah, for sure. You're the better generation. But that always feels like the narrative. Ah, the older generation knows better, and this new one, pfft, they don't know nothing. But millennials are the generation from 1989 to 1996. And it's true, it was a simpler time. You would go grab your baseball mitt, run down to your buddy's house, ditch the mitt, and then try to download pictures of boobs on dial-up. After two hours, you had one fully downloaded boob. Life was kind of beautiful back then. These kids don't appreciate just one boob. Well, consider me old-fashioned. I'm a boobs half full kind of guy. We went from Tamagotchis to smartphones. We went from Game Boy Colors to Pokemon Go, and Hit Clips to LimeWire, and then finally to Spotify. You guys remember Hit Clips? Coming at you right between the ears. Play like 30 seconds of a song. I guess that was the original Vine. But not only did we see a crazy evolution in technology, we saw a huge growth in social media and how people communicate with each other. And we kind of reacted to social media the same way a granola kid reacts to having Mountain Dew for the first time at a sleepover. We freaked the fuck out. Everything changed and has continued to change. And I don't know if millennials have fully adapted. And I think it's caused a lot of us to be stuck in a very unique time in history. Today, Today I kind of want to find out if that's our fault. Did cringe millennials make mistakes or were they doing the best they could with the tools they had? I know a lot of us were kind of awkward about it, but sometimes I feel like people are a little harsh on millennials. But on the same side, as a millennial, I feel super embarrassed. I want to find out if I'm being defensive or if I'm projecting. I mean, it's probably both. I think a lot of millennials feel like they're lost in space. Everyone started to forget about muffins and nyan cat. Sometimes I wonder, was it better back then? Or am I just feeding my nostalgia so I never
never have to grow up. When we asked the question, can I has cheeseburger? And then society finally answered and said no. I feel like a lot of us just clung to our barn weddings and our Tumblr posts, and we never wanted to move on. I feel like our weird nostalgia became our identity. And today I want to find out why. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Love and Pies. Gang, Love and Pies is an adorable, cheeky little game and it's free to play on your phone or tablet and i literally can't stop playing it the game revolves around the fascinating story of taking over your mom's burned down cafe where you aim to build a thriving business but that's not all there's also a mystery to unravel surrounding your mom's disappearance Ooh. along with the daily chaos of small town gossip and unexpected romance and guys i don't know about you but i love playing cozy games with a fun storyline that makes me feel all warm inside and love and pie is exactly that. Dude, it's so easy to pick up and play. I love playing while I'm in between editing videos and it's the best to play if I'm trying to relax after a really long day. And gang, the gossip is mwah. I grew up with small town gossip and now I'm getting a healthy dose thanks to Love and Pies. The gameplay is unbelievable. The graphics are so cute and so stunning and the game is filled with wacky and diverse characters like Betty and Sven. Dude, Betty, Betty's hilarious. She makes me laugh. And guys, the game is jam-packed with thrilling events that offer a wealth of free rewards. You'll feel like a VIP just for playing. Plus, new content is released every week ensuring that the game stays fresh and engaging. And guys, if you love small town gossip with a bit of mystery and a hint of drama, then you don't want to miss out on Love and Pies. So guys, brace yourself for the juiciest drama imaginable as you step into the shoes of the main character. Your mission is to rebuild your family cafe from the ashes after a mysterious arsonist set it on fire. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. In this small town, trust is a precious commodity and it's up to you to uncover scandalous family secrets, rediscover long lost romances, and expose ancient grudges that threaten to tear your entire community apart. So guys, join me in playing Love and Pies. Let's solve some mysteries, let's listen to some gossip, and let's make some pies. So guys, if you're like me and you love solving mysteries and you love building your own little cafe, then download Love and Pies on iOS and Android today. Thank you so much to Love and Pies for sponsoring this video, and thank you as always for the nuggets. Alrighty guys, let's get back to the video. So let's move on to the interviews. So guys, say hi to my guests, Danny and Curtis. Hi. I was look I was looking at my camera. If it didn't look like I was looking into the webcam, I have I'm looking at my camera. Are you going to look there the whole time? Um, I'll be looking all over the place, man, honestly. Yeah, you're you're a pro. Depending on how well you hold my attention, I might start looking over there. No, 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 no. See what's going on over here. I got to start doing like like goofy noises and stuff and be like, woohoo, uh, ahuga. Like, <gasps> <gasps> okay, yay. I'm bored again. No, 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 no. Uh, monkey with symbols. Monkey with symbols. Monkey Whoa, with symbols. Whoa, that's fun bang, to bang, imagine. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Okay. Just look at me and think about that the whole time. Ah, okay. That's a good trick. Yeah, yeah, I am. We fucking got you. What gave it away? The attention span, always <laughs> needing to be looking at a monkey with clapping symbols. No, that's fair. Yeah, I'm definitely a millennial. Um, I think the cutoff is like 96. I was born in 94. Yeah, we're both, uh, we're both on the end. Couldn't quite escape. No, I wish I could have uh, jumped ship, but just couldn't get out. I think it kind of depends. If we're looking through the lens of, of today pretty much all millennials have been cringe i guess the whole question is kind of framed around what gen z thinks is cringe true yeah i guess so we grow out of it yeah some people understand that saying like adulting and i did a thing is like not very funny anymore but some people do still think that that's pretty funny uh, the people who made uh, the Wonka, the new Wonka movie, think that that's still uh, <laughs> really funny. Dude, I can't wait to see that movie. That's going to be my millennial hell. Nope. Scratch that. Reverse it. Do you think it is fully uh, like an optics thing or do you think that no, like it is pretty cringe? I don't know if it really has to do with other generations, I guess, per se. I think it's just more so the passage of time. We look back on our younger selves the same way like our parents would look back at themselves from the 80s. Oh my God, what was I wearing back then? Why did I like this music back then? Why did I always say awkward turtle and go like this back then? Bruh. Well, because that's every generation has to do awkward turtle. I guarantee the boomers were doing that <laughs> at Woodstock or... <laughs> <laughs> they just had different ways of, of saying awkward turtle. Like in the, in the 50s, they'd be like, awkward turtle, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and they, you know, would do it like that. 
Oh yeah. Just the first thing that comes to my mind is in high school, me and my friend got matching like, you know, those like rubber wristbands that were really popular. Yep. We both got really thick ones that just say awkward on them. <laughs> Yeah, we both bonded over being awkward. That was your friendship bracelet. <laughs> Were you into like the, like almost like, I guess it's not even cringe, but like the millennial fashion we look back on now, like mm. we see is pretty cringe. Did you, uh, were you in, involved in any of that? Oh yeah. Um, in middle school, I had the classic like beanie with a brim. I wanted to have one. My parents wouldn't buy it for me. They were like, you have a, you have a, a toque anyways, or uh, sorry, a beanie. No, that's okay. I, I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, Canada, you, you have some Canadian friends up here. You get yeah, us, Yeah, don't worry, man. I'm friends with a lot of you guys. I don't, okay. I don't judge. What do you mean? You guys, <laughs> you people, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> But I wasn't allowed to have one, so I took, like, an actual, like, brimmed hat and then tried to pull my toque over it. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Like, I think my toque was, like, brown, and it was, like, a, like, do you remember the blue Cookie Monster hat? Yeah. It didn't match, and I thought I was tricking everybody. Yeah, I had, I think mine was, like, the, you know, DC, that brand. It was that brand of beanie. It had a brim. It, it was, like, forest green. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if there's any other, like, fashion things. I know I had, like, big, puffy, like, skater-looking shoes that look like they would be, like, those Osiris shoes, but I don't think I ever had Osiris shoes. Uh, with, like, the fat tongues, maybe some, like, uh, opposite color laces on each foot. Yeah. And I looked really cool in all of these things because I also looked like five years younger than everybody else in my grade. Oh. Because I was short <laughs> and I was a late bloomer. So I looked like I was trying to dress like a teenager, but I was like, 10 years old. My younger sister uh, was always like a foot taller than me. So I was like <laughs> really little. Like I had the same thing where I, everyone was like, I think you're in the wrong grade. And then I had to be like, no, I'm just like a skater guy, I guess. Like I, <laughs> I'm just like you, I'm a skater. What do you want? What are you talking about up there? <laughs> I think cringe. Um, no, probably not. I don't, I don't think that, um, they, that they are bad people just for being cringe. But sometimes when I see a millennial that is extremely cringe, I feel as though they are a bad person. Like I feel about them the way I would feel about someone who's committed atrocities. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's based off of like, do you think you're kind of projecting your own like embarrassment of what you had knowing that you were a cringe millennial mm. or do you just straight up think like they need to grow up and get over it and stop acting like that uh it's probably a mix of both because sometimes i see things like i never really thought saying like adulting is hard was funny i don't remember ever thinking that was funny no but when i do see people say that i'm like shut the fuck up yeah. <laughs> have you seen Nick Jonas's TikTok? Um, I've seen, I think I've seen one or two that have come up. Like the birthday cake one where he was like. So I did a thing today and I'm, I'm proud of it. It's just a normal Saturday, normal Saturday, but uh, sometimes you just gotta. Order a birthday cake for no reason. Literally just ordered this for no reason. Couldn't be happier. Do you think he's doing that on purpose or do you think that's really Nick Jonas? I think that's him. I think that the Jonas Brothers are somehow isolated in their weird, like, celebrity, their version of celebrity. And I feel like they never really got to uh, grow out of that that time. They were peak millennial at the time. They were like, they had the scene look, the pop punk look. Sometimes, man, you can take the millennial out of the 2010s, but you can't take the 2010s out of the millennial. Yeah. You... <laughs> you said it, dude. That's right. Well, I do like saying epic. I, I do that from time to time. I was going to say like the whole like, uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? But I don't know if that's a millennial thing or that feels like it's from like movies from the 80s or something. I think that's pretty millennial. I think you're right. Like that is like a, that is like a movie trope. Any, like, exclamation like that? Yeah, going like this. Going like that, I think that's super millennial. Even if it is, like, a purely, like, an 80s thing, we adopted it and, like, kind of beat that into the ground until it was super, super cringe. Things that I miss or things that, like, I actually do kind of think slap, the scene look. Did you have, uh, did you have scene hair? 
I gr I had long hair, but I never like straightened it. I guess more like a uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody hair, but wavier. Yeah, I think I wished I had the balls to straighten my hair. Yeah, I had like a little tiny like straightener, and I like would all, but I would only like kind of do the bangs. So would your hair still flip out on the sides? Yeah. Oh wow, that's an interesting look. Yeah, it was super. Uh, it was super not kind of scene. It didn't fit at all. <laughs> Sometimes, man, you can take the millennial out of the 2010s, but you can't take the 2010s out of the millennial. Yeah, you <laughs> you said it, dude. That's right. Ah! Hey, guys. Well, <laughs> awesome. And now for my next guest, Curtis Connor. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, is that like forever now? I don't know. What'd you do to me? This is what happens when you collab with me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you turn like a very like almost offensive British. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, there's something in my throat. What was it? A pot of tea? A British man. A little British man? No, he's regular size. So you swallowed him? Let's just say yes. All right. Um, yeah, could you do? Could you do a cringe British guy, like a millennial British guy? I don't think I've ever done that. Hold on. Fetch me my fish and chips. <laughs> 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 you do know it's not a sweater, it's a jumper. Yeah, I think cringe British person is a little redundant. Oh. Yeah. Fucking shots fired. They're all cringe, dude. Nothing more cringe than the fucking queen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Youch! Yeah. <laughs> Youch! <laughs> Let's talk about some cringe millennials. Uh, You do a, a, an incredible job of doing that kind of character and you you do it like scary well <laughs> thanks it, i i don't know i i'm excited to talk to you about this because it's because we're both millennials we were both born in 1994 I think a little bit we we got out of it i think we fall into it a little bit but we got out of it yeah you and i we had our fair share of cringe the millennial sickness was it was terminal we thought definitely a terminal illness <laughs> Yeah. This my in my experience that was the scariest terminal illness I had. Second was brain cancer, but <laughs> number one was being a cringe millennial. There is no cure. No, there isn't. There is no cure. You just kind of have to like you got to quit it cold turkey. Yes. Yeah, you are recovering. May fourth, nineteen ninety four. Uh, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> <laughs> the most have, millennial like, birthday. <laughs> There's so many people out there that are like, God, if I could just have Curtis's birthday. There's fucking geeks that are like, um, I'm feeling kind of R2-D2 today. Misa thinks it's a uh, Star Wars day. <laughs> Bacon I want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think being a, a millennial was this like there's an inherent cringe that that just being on the internet, especially. Well, everyone is cringe, but I feel like especially with millennials, it's just like so much because we were just like we didn't know the internet really was because it was ex like exploding so fast where we were like I don't know what to even grasp onto. So yeah, I think all millennials are are, are inherently cringe. I think I do probably a cringy millennial thing uh, probably once a day. The amount of times that I, like, I'll eat something and I'm just like, now that was awesome. Like you want to say epic? That's it slipping out a little bit. Now because of I think you I think you should leave the amount of times in a day I go, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. But I mean, that's like, that's ironic. But the it's weird. Like the, like the, like the ironic nonsense kind of becomes, it comes full circle again where like, yeah, we just use it how how it's supposed to be used now it's coming back which is so weird yeah. it's kind of like the the bore at my wife type thing <laughs> yes i have been one and i have also related to them several times in which way were you a cringe millennial i think i was a big like like 2012 hipster i didn't go as far as like suspenders and shit i i sure did i sure fucking did i know you did i think i got it was like getting a mustache like tattoo right there i was like i wanted that well and like mustaches are different now where like mustaches go down now mustaches used to go up because we were so like hopeful so we were like everything's on the up and up um, but no, I do relate to a lot of cringe millennials even to this day because the internet and social media was really sort of like ramping up and there was like so many different sub communities and genres and things and like hipsters. I was like, what? There's no way that those people are real. That's so cool. I, I would like 
out loud go, no, I am a hipster. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like, I wanted, I wanted to claim it. Like, yeah, I think it was a, uh, it was a Facebook post. I was wearing some fucking like, I don't know, some fucking t-shirt. And then, uh, I like had my hair going a certain way and I, and I literally put hipster flow and just put it on Facebook. Whoa. That's crazy. Doesn't that fucking that suck? Sucks. <laughs> but I mean to that, like an ironic t-shirt, that's all we buy. Right there. <laughs> Why suck? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> you know what? Thinking back, yes. I think we did <laughs> <laughs> I think we did the best that we could provided we had uh, the tools that we had and the the landscape of culture at the time. Because that's because it made sense for that group of people it, it was just what was going to happen regardless being the guinea pigs of the internet and social media right like of course that's how we would have reacted yeah there was no other way if we do like if there's like a multiverse thing every timeline that happens <laughs> There's, there's not one world where we're not planking on the highway <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> planking that is that is integral to human development i think doing the harlem shake and like uh consciousness are like the most important things <laughs> in human development Do the harlem shake. i had a lot of fun in my planking days it was the it was a big trend to do it in like 2010 2011 and i've had some people say i've posted some pictures especially the one on a phone booth some people have messaged me saying they like they saw that picture like circulating like on tumblr and shit i was a fucking celeb planker dude you were ahead of the culture man you were fucking like you're a pioneer i tried to bring it back on tour last year but it didn't stick do you think that cringe millennials made any mistakes during like the early <laughs> stages of the internet no no oh okay oh he is back in here mate <laughs> sorry I'm trying to think of like a fun name for british curtis morris or something mortis <laughs> Be like, oh, Mortis. Rigor Mortis. Rick and Mortis. That's the <laughs> that's the British Rick and Morty. <laughs> they turn me into a pickle, Rick. Flomadonga Ding Dong or whatever the <laughs> or whatever hell. the fuck they say. British burp. <laughs> Damn, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I think one of my was uh I think it was like it's not like a thing you say but it was more so a thing that you comment if something was like really cool or really like funny or like a crate like a or like really smart sir you just won the internet for today wow yeah <laughs> that, was, that was a good really good one this wins the internet yeah that's a very uh that's a very like bottom text yeah 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 it's like it's adjacent to i did a thing yeah, or, you know, or the classic that just happened. And we know some people that still fucking talk like that. And Oh, uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and there's things about you that you can never change. You just got to embrace it. Sometimes sometimes you lose your mind when LMFAO comes on, and that's okay. It's The, the quote is, do not kill the part of you that is cringe. Kill the part of you that cringes. Um, stay cringe. Could you do your uh, uh, your little uh, your little cringe millennial thing? Do you want like uh, just like classic classic millennial? Do you want a, like a situation? Yeah, sure. Give me an, a situation. Just saw like muffins for the first time, or maybe shoes. But you're posting it on Facebook. What are you captioning the repost of the of the video? Uh, <laughs> I have to tell my besties about this. Uh, Facebook.com. What's on my mind now? <laughs> I've seen a lot in my day, but this, this just won the internet. Epic. So thanks, Curtis. Thanks, Danny. And guys, don't forget to go subscribe to their channels. I love you guys with all my heart. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I feel a lot better about being a millennial after talking to Danny and Curtis. I guess now I can just move on and get back to watching my millennial content. No. It's been a while since I saw my What? Wait, what's... I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. So Why? No, no, no. No. No! I think I made a mistake. Maybe millennials are bad. Maybe they're the worst generation of all. I have to interview more friends. 
Yeah, I definitely have a, a big hatred for any generational uh, uh, grouping. I think every generation is horrid in their own unique ways, whether that's war or uh, potato jokes. Mm -hmm.